This cop stops a man who looks like his dead son. Seconds later, he sees something shocking on the man's dashboard. Officer Ernest had spent years patrolling the same streets, seeing the same faces, and experiencing the same routine. It was a job he loved, but ever since his son Irwin died in Iraq serving his country, each day felt heavier than the last one. Today, he sat in his patrol car, scanning the quiet road like he had done for years. It was a typical morning, the kind that passed without incident. As he was lost in thought, Officer Ernest noticed the truck approaching from the opposite direction. At first, it was just another vehicle among the many he saw daily, but as it drew closer, something about the driver's face struck him. Ernest squinted as he tried to get a better look at the driver. As he did, his heart began to race. The man behind the wheel looked astonishingly familiar. Too familiar. Ernest racked his mind as he tried to place the face. The resemblance was indeed chilling. It was as if he were looking at his own dead son, Irvin. The shock of it hit Officer Ernest like a lightning bolt. The back of the truck had a military bumper sticker. The whole thing was uncanny, and without a second thought, Officer Ernest started his patrol car and drove towards the truck. The driver of the truck was William Joswinski, and he was enjoying a peaceful morning drive. Driving had always been relieving for him, especially since he began his recent PTSD rehabilitation program. The open road gave him a sense of freedom and calm that he desperately needed. As he drove along the familiar route, he noticed the flashing lights of a police car in his rearview mirror. William became confused. He checked his speedometer as he ran through the morning's events in his head. He hadn't been speeding and he hadn't missed any stop signs, so there wasn't any reason for him to be pulled over. But William had to comply with the authorities. He reluctantly pulled over to the side of the road and waited. He watched in his side mirror as the police car with flashing lights came to a stop behind them. A few moments later, a police officer in his 60s got out of the car and started walking towards his truck. When Officer Ernest got out of his patrol car, his heart was pounding. As he approached the truck, he found himself slowing down. He was trying to catch his breath and steady his thoughts. But the closer he got to the driver, the more certain he became of the resemblance. He walked up to the driver's side window, and then he stopped short. His mouth fell open in shock. The young man sitting in the driver's seat looked almost exactly like his late son. William could see the look of shock and disbelief on the officer's face. The cop was just standing there and staring at him with his mouth wide open as if he had seen a ghost. This troubled William. He tried to get the officer's attention by asking if everything was alright, but the man just stood there as if he were frozen in place. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, the officer seemed to snap out of his trance. He shook his head as if to clear it as he realized he had been staring. He blinked a few times and took a deep breath to compose himself. Good morning, Officer Ernest replied in a shaky voice. I'm sorry, I just thought you were someone else for a moment. William was puzzled by the officer's behavior. He asked the officer if he had done something wrong to be pulled over. The officer who still appeared a bit dazed only shook his head. William had done nothing wrong. Instead, he mentioned that he had seen the military bumper sticker on William's truck. He just pulled him over because he wanted to thank him for his service. That was when the officer added something that made William very surprised. He told William that he reminded him of his military son. William instantly relaxed. He thanked the officer for his words of appreciation. He was happy to have served this country. Noting some tears in the officer's eyes, William asked the officer if his son had served as well. Ernest sadly nodded as a yes. He confirmed that his son had served in Iraq, but sadly he did not make it home. William felt sympathy for the old man. In a gentle voice, he told the man that he had also served in Iraq as a heavy-wheeled vehicle operator. After getting back from Iraq, he had done a 15-month service at Fort Benning, Georgia, before leaving the army. Officer Ernest seemed to find some comfort in William's words, and he began to relax a bit. With a mix of pride and pain in his eyes, he talked about how his son had been very proud to serve. It was just sad that it had cost him his life, he whispered in a trembling voice. As William sat in his truck, he watched as the cop's expression changed from a professional demeanor to a more personal and vulnerable one. There was something in the way Officer Ernest looked at him. It was like he felt both pain and longing. It wasn't long before Ernest began to share his sad story, and William was happy to listen. Officer Ernest's face seemed to brighten up at first as he began to talk about his son's early life. Irwin had been a bright and spirited boy as a child, and he was full of potential and promise. 
From a young age, he had shown a natural curiosity and eagerness to learn. He was the pride of Ernest's life in a world where he had few joys. While Irvin had grown up in a loving home, it had more than its fair share of challenges. Ernest's job as a police officer demanded long hours, and the pay was never enough compensation for the amount of time he worked. The rising costs of living added financial strain to the family, and it led to frequent arguments between Ernest and his wife Sarah. Their one strong relationship began to shake under the weight of these pressures. By the time Irvin was 17 years old, he had grown tired of the constant bickering at home. While he loved both his parents dearly, the tension between them made staying home unbearable. So with the desire to find an escape and the sense of purpose, Irvin made a decision that would change all their lives forever. Without even discussing it with his parents, he signed up for the army right after his high school graduation. When Irvin announced his decision, it was a shock to both Ernest and Sarah. At first, they were horrified. The thought of their son potentially going off to war, especially given the volatile situation in the Middle East, scared them to the core. However, Irvin was determined. He wanted to make something of himself and serve his country while escaping the constant arguments at home. After Irvin returned from basic training and later from his first tour unharmed, Ernest's fear began to give way to cautious pride. The cop was very proud of his son's bravery and dedication. He began to see Irvin as the embodiment of values he held dear, the values of honor, duty, and service. However, Sarah remained very fearful. She could not shake the worry that her only son might be taken from her. When Irvin returned from his first tour, she pleaded with him not to return to Iraq. She begged him to go to college or consider a safer career path, but Irvin's mind was made up. He believed in what he was doing and felt a strong sense of responsibility toward his fellow soldiers. Despite his mother's pleas, Irvin persisted and went for two more tours. He loved his mother, but duty called. His main consolation from home was that his father was proud of him. It was during the third tour that tragedy struck. Unfortunately, Irvin was killed in action in Iraq, and the news devastated the family. Ernest remembered the day they received that fateful knock on the door. The sight of the uniformed officers nearly stopped their hearts, as the family knew they came to deliver the worst news a parent could hear. The world seemed to collapse around the family at that moment. Sarah's worst fears had come true, and the pain was almost too much to bear. The loss of Irvin tore the family apart. Sarah and their daughter Lizzie blamed Ernest for encouraging Irvin to pursue his military career. They believed that if he had discouraged Irvin, he would still be alive. These accusations and the sorrow from their loss made the gap between Ernest and his wife grow. After 23 years of marriage, Sarah divorced him and left with their 16-year-old daughter. As Ernest told his story, William couldn't help but see the love and pride Ernest had for his son, as well as deep hurt the old man carried. Ernest did not just lose his son, but his family. Even worse, while the old man was proud of his son's heroism, he still could not find an answer to the nagging question that haunted him. Was he to blame for Irvin's death? Could he have done something differently to protect his son? These doubts kept him up every night. William could relate because he had lost friends and understood the pain of such profound loss. He knew that nothing could truly ease the pain Ernest felt, but he hoped that listening to him might bring some sort of small measure of comfort. Ernest finally took a deep breath and steadied himself. He thanked Will for listening to him as it meant a lot to be able to talk about his son. He then confided in William that seeing him brought back memories. For a moment I thought you were him. The cop said. William nodded. The young man placed a comforting hand on Ernest's shoulder and thanked the old cop for sharing with him. He believed Irvin was a hero, and he asked the officer to never doubt that or feel guilty about it. That's when Officer Ernest saw something that made his heart skip a beat. He was still standing by William's truck discussing when his eyes fell upon something familiar on William's dashboard. It was a folded American flag, almost identical to the one Ernest had received when he was informed of his son's death. The sight of the flag almost brought back his pain all over again. Ernest pointed to the flag with a shaking hand. That flag, it looks just like the one they gave me for my son. William followed his gaze to the flag. As he did, he nodded and told the officer that the flag was an honor for all his friends and comrades who lost their lives in Iraq. That flag in particular was in honor of his friend Jeb. He was more than just a friend to William. He was like a brother. When William saw the curiosity in Ernest's eyes, he began to share the story of Jeb. He and Jeb had met during their deployment in Iraq. Jeb had been transported to heavy wheeled vehicle operation and they were responsible for transporting supplies and personnel across dangerous territories. From the beginning, there was a natural comradeship between them. Jeb was witty and funny and he always knew how to lift spirits, even in the bleakest circumstances. 
Whether it was cracking jokes during long convoys or offering a calm smile when tension was high, Jeb's presence was a blessing in their unit. Will and Jeb became inseparable and they talked about everything except family, which Jeb did not like bringing up. They faced countless dangers together from roadside bombs to enemy ambushes. In all these, they always looked out for each other. Jeb's bravery and loyalty left a strong impression on William, and he often relied on his friend to help him back up whenever he was down. But then tragedy struck. William had lost three friends in under nine days, and he knew Jeb was next. During a particularly dangerous mission, their supply convoy was ambushed. The situation quickly turned chaotic as bullets flew and explosion rocked the ground. During the attack, Jeb was critically injured. William's heart nearly stopped as he saw his friend fall to the sand, never to rise again. Despite the danger all around, William rushed to Jeb's side, determined to save his friend. As William recounted these events, his voice was trembling and his arms were shaking. He described how he had held Jeb in his arms and tried desperately to stop the bleeding. But despite his efforts to keep him conscious, Jeb's injuries were too severe and he gave up the ghost. The last thing he said was how much William meant to him and how proud he was to have served by his side. Of all the friends that he had lost, Jeb's death haunted William the most. The loss of his friend left a void that could never be filled, and worse than that, it gave him repeated nightmares. In fact, Will was just coming from a PTSD rehabilitation program he had enrolled in to cope with the trauma of losing Jeb. The horrors of war had left deep scars on his mind, and they caused not only nightmares but seizures and harmful thoughts. The PTSD was affecting every aspect of William's life, including his marriage. His wife, Kate, had tried to be supportive, but the constant fear and unpredictability of his condition made her nervous. She worried constantly about his safety, especially after one particularly terrifying incident. William had been fixing the roof one evening when Kate found him standing at the edge and staring into distance. She panicked, fearing that he might jump because his pain had become too much to bear. Kate had to scream out his name to pull him back to reality. Even though such an incident did not repeat itself, the fear never truly left Kate's. William knew his struggles were putting a strain on their relationship and family. He saw the worry in Kate's eyes, and he felt the tension in their conversations. That's why he had to focus on his PTSD rehabilitation program. The therapy sessions were difficult but necessary, as they helped him process his trauma and find ways to cope with his grief. But while the therapy helped him manage his symptoms, William knew the road to recovery was going to be very long. On some days, he felt like he was close to falling apart. Yet despite the grief and the PTSD, William felt pride in Jeb's bravery and sacrifice. The folded flag on his dashboard served as a daily reminder of his friend's heroism. It was not just a tribute to Jeb, but also a way to keep his memory alive. Each time William looked at the flag, it was as if his best friend was there with him, and they were riding a truck like old times. As Ernest listened, his own eyes filled with tears again. The story of Jeb resonated deeply with him, and it brought back memories of losing his son. At that moment, Ernest and William were not just the police officer and the civilian. Instead, they were two grieving men who had experienced deep loss. Ernest reached out and placed a hand on William's shoulder. Thank you for sharing Jeb's story with me. My son would have been honored to know men like you and Jeb. William nodded. He felt better just talking about how he felt. That was when Ernest cleared his throat and asked an unexpected question. Would you mind stepping out of the truck for a moment? William hesitated, but then he agreed because he could sense that it was something important. He got out of the truck and stood facing the officer, who looked at him with both sorrow and gratitude. Do you mind if I ask you for a hug? The officer asked quietly. You remind me so much of my son, and I just need it. William did not need to reply. He just stepped forward and embraced the officer. It was a long and heartfelt hug. Both men cried as they let their emotions flow freely. They held on to each other as if trying to mend their broken hearts through a hug. For the two men, the hug was more than just a gesture. It was a moment of healing and the break from the overwhelming grief that had consumed them. Both men found a sense of peace and understanding that had been eluding them for so long. William felt a release of the pent-up emotions that had haunted him since his return from Iraq. As they separated, Officer Ernest reached into his pocket for a handkerchief to wipe his tears. In doing so, a photograph slipped out of his pocket. The photo was of a young man who was smiling brightly in a military uniform. Ernest quickly bent down to pick it up. Without thinking, he showed it to William. This is my son Irvin, Ernest said in a sad voice. William's eyes widened as he took the photograph. The face staring back at him was unmistakable. That's Jeb, he almost screamed. Jeb was the name we called him in the field. Ernest looked at William in disbelief. You knew him? he asked. William nodded as the shock of revelation sank in. The young man in the picture was his best friend, Jeb. 
William couldn't believe it. He knew Jeb's last name, but he never knew his real given name was Irvin. This realization hit Ernest like a wave. He had just met the man who had spent the last moments with his son. William was the man who had held Irvin as he took his final breath. The improbability of their meeting left both men stunned. For William, the encounter was nothing short of a miracle. The realization that Ernest was Jeb's father brought a new form of healing to him. Ernest confided in William that while losing Irvin was one of the hardest things he ever gone through, meeting William and hearing about how his son's final moments meant more to him than he could imagine. William reached out and shook Ernest's hand. Thank you, he said simply, for sharing your story and the hug. I needed this more than I realized. Ernest squeezed his hand and thanked William for giving him closure on his son. They exchanged numbers and parted ways, both men feeling better. The seemingly random encounter at a chance traffic stop had become a moment of deep healing. William drove away with a lighter heart, knowing that he had finally learned something new about his best friend. As Ernest watched him go, he was happier as he now had a newfound connection to his son. In the days that followed their emotional encounter, William found himself reflecting on the profound impact it had on him earlier. Later, he shared the event on his Facebook page. The simple act of sharing a story on Facebook unexpectedly touched the hearts of thousands as the post was liked and reshared 180,000 times. As the story spread, messages of support poured in from people all over the world. It moved many people to share their own stories of loss and healing. For William and Officer Ernest, the outpouring of support was touching. Though their paths had crossed by chance, they knew that their connection was no accident. In the weeks and months that followed, William and Ernest continued to stay in touch. Their newfound friendship, through Irvin, helped them both heal. Together they found comfort in knowing that their story had touched the lives of so many by offering hope to those who were struggling with their pain. What a story. How best do you think our heroes should deal with their grief and pain? Share your thoughts in the comments. See you in the next video.